very, very much. Um, well, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm Dwyer Arce, President of the Pitlaw Democrats, and uh, it is my honor today to introduce Congressman Joe Sestak. Congressman Sestak grew up in a family of eight children in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. His mother was a math teacher and his father a Navy captain. Joe followed his father's footsteps to the Naval Academy and later earned a PhD in political economy from Harvard University. In his 31-year Navy career, he rose to the rank of three-star admiral and served in the Clinton White House. In the aftermath of 9-11, he was chosen to lead the Navy's anti-terrorism unit and was selected to command an aircraft carrier battle group in command operations in Afghanistan and Iraq. In 2006, Joe defeated a 10-term GOP incumbent in a district that had a 22-point Republican advantage. In Congress, Congressman Sestak is recognized, was recognized as the most productive first-year legislator in his class and has passed more legislation than either Pennsylvania senator this term. Now, Congressman Sestak is running for U.S. Senate as a Democratic nominee against Republican Pat Toomey in one of the most closely watched and consequential Senate races in the country. So please join me in welcoming Congressman Se uh, Joe Sestak. Thank you. He gave me this if I ended on time. <laughs> Thank you most for your welcoming. And I mean that very, very much. And thanks for the introduction. It has always been uniquely recognized that America is a land of great promise and great opportunity. It's a place where every individual has a chance to determine his or her own future, free of discrimination, fear, or prejudice. For me, this principle has been realized in a very deeply personal way. When I was in third grade, I set a goal for myself to join the Navy and then command a ship at sea. I had wanted to follow in my father's footsteps. As a child, my dad came to Pennsylvania from Czechoslovakia with my grandfather, who got a job as a steel worker so he could provide for his family. He grew up in a middle-class household in Coatesville, right here in Pennsylvania, and fought in both the Atlantic and the Pacific theaters of the Second World War in the United States Navy. And then my dad rose to be a Navy captain. And although he was born halfway around the world, today, having lived to see his own son achieve his dream at sea, my father now rests at Arlington National Cemetery, a genuine American hero, the best man I've ever met. The The values he taught me, I carry with me every day. And the lessons he passed down about hard work, accountability, and patriotic service have shaped my career. They have shaped my life. And in many ways, my father's story defines the promise inherent in the American dream. That no matter who we are or where we come from in this country, everyone has an equal opportunity to succeed. And every parent can leave their children with a brighter future than the one they inherited from the generations that came before. That's why I'm here today. Because I believe every American deserves the chance to make good on this promise and the opportunity to match their skills to their aspirations in any endeavor they decide to pursue. But I entered this race because across America, for the very first time. It's become harder and harder for people to realize their dreams and use their God-given talents to do better than the generations that came before. 
It's hard to blame people for feeling that the American dream, that great promise that I had lived, has now been broken because it has been. Today our challenge is to restore it, to ensure that our children, your children, can inherit better opportunities than the ones we face right now. We've seen that over the last few years. Working families have been slammed. Their economic security has actually been gambled away, and they're finding it more and more difficult to make ends meet, let alone plan for the future and aspire to achieve the American dream. But that's exactly why I'm running for the U.S. Senate. For the same reasons that drove me to join the military at a time when our country was involved in Vietnam. Because we're facing difficult challenges, and I have never shied away from a fight. This is a moment for courageous leadership. This is a moment for problem solvers. For those who will take a practical approach rather than cater to party leaders or an extreme ideology. So more than a year ago, with those principles at the forefront of my mind, I gathered with a group of supporters in my home district, Delaware County, to announce my candidacy for the United States Senate. And although we have come a long way since that day, the challenges we continue to face, the principles I uphold, and the values that drive my campaign remain absolutely the same. This decade, for the very first time in many, many years, many working Amer Pennsylvanians are struggling to do better and to leave their kids better off than they are today. The middle class, which used to be the source of our prosperity, is shrinking. The pact between generations has been broken by those like my opponent, who focus not on fair opportunities for all, but on enhanced opportunities for a few. This undermined our economic security and has placed our future, all of our futures, at risk. As a result, people's livelihoods have been damaged, even ripped apart. And dreams have ended, as so many are finding it harder than they ever remember, just to get by. That's why we need a new leadership with practical leaders that fights for us in Washington. Like in the US Navy, where we invested in our sailors, who then made our military strong. As a congressman, I've always stood with the working families who drive this country forward. Now I'm fighting to do the same for all Pennsylvanians. They have been let down and shut out by a political process that fails to provide the practical solutions we need in a class of Washington politicians that doesn't understand or just doesn't care about the challenges that ordinary people are facing every single day. <clears throat> Too many politicians <clears throat> seem to have forgotten that the American dream is not about personal wealth or material success for a select few. Instead, it's about ensuring a fair opportunity for all to realize their potential and shaping a world that's better for the next generation so they are inspired to do the same. Our politicians have broken this promise and violated the public trust we elected them to fulfill. Never has a government of the people been held in such low regard by the people. And this is something we need to change more than anything else on a very fundamental level. That's why I've never been content to play by the old rules and why I defied the leaders of my own party to enter this race in the first place. The establishment tried to push me out. They spent millions attacking me and tried to deny Pennsylvanians the choices that they deserve. But I refused to back down and without hesitation I stood up and said, you're wrong. And I fought hard with others against the establishment and we won for us. But I've never been interested in becoming part of a broken system, but rather repairing it. And I just don't have any patience for the usual Washington games. I've always remembered Congressman Mike Doyle, who once said to me, Joe, you're a crappy politician. <laughs> He's right. I took that as a compliment. <laughs> I 
I don't want to be a politician. I want to be a public servant who will never stop fighting for us, for the working family. And that's exactly what I intend to do as your next U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania. I know the middle class has always been at the heart of our prosperity, and that's why they are the key to our economic recovery. In the Navy, I learned to reject ideology and just do what it takes to solve problems. But my opponent has a very different and a very rigid set of ideas, and he has always taken a very different approach because of his different values, different than mainstream Pennsylvanians. I know Congressman Toomey. We've had a beer together. But his rigid mindset is fundamentally wrong. He thinks the solution to all our problems lays in the values of Wall Street, which places the interests of large banks, big corporations, over the needs of individual families, with a belief wealth might eventually trickle down to them, that is, to us. And he doesn't. And he just doesn't recognize the damage that that kind of thinking, his philosophy, his rigid ideology did to our economy. He doesn't understand that these policies have ruined people's lives and cost over 8 million jobs across the country, including 600,000 jobs right here in Pennsylvania. So it's no wonder he wants to privatize our Social Security Eliminate all corporation taxes. And it says the U.S. financial system should work more like the system in Hong Kong. It's no wonder he thinks that if we give bigger and bigger tax breaks to bankers, corporations, derivative traders, and the richest of the rich, wealth might somehow trickle down to us here in Pennsylvania. There's no question that is extreme policies of deficit spending and deregulation have hurt our working families. In fact, he's gone as far as offering and voting for tax rewards to companies that ship jobs overseas and open factories in places like China. In a book he published just last year, he wrote that illegally subsidized foreign goods were actually a gift to American consumers, even though they cost us jobs. And he said that the United States has an unfortunate tendency to enact policies that encourage people to buy American. An unfortunate tendency. When I first read that, I couldn't believe my opponent would say something quite so out of touch. These aren't figures on a balance sheet. Our people's livelihoods are at stake. Entire American industries and communities can be upended by this type of callous attitude. But when you open his book, there it is, in black and white. This speaks volumes about the rigid mindset and ideology that drives his agenda and proves he just doesn't understand the challenges that we all face. In fact, his hometown paper recently noted that he likes to campaign from 30,000 feet, gazing down at middle-class families from the window of his private plane. But unlike my opponent, I know Pennsylvania is not a flyover state on one's way from Wall Street to Washington, D.C. We need a senator who understands what people are actually going through, not someone who views our problems from cruising at altitude and isn't interested in looking people in the eye and offering real solutions. Working Pennsylvanians know buy American is not an unfortunate tendency. That's why I want to revitalize.